This episode of On Stage is brought to you by Perfect Love Jamaica, talent show and gospel concert. Saturday, May 18 at Friendship Primary School, Fairfield Road, Spanish Town. For tickets and info, dial 843-3720. What Sharon Marley tells us about the impact of the Bob Marley One Love movie on the Marley estate. Don't let them fool you. Say you wanna slut some. While Devo, who plays his father Junior Marvin in the movie, shares his latest music project. Mother and Papa de Last week during his appearance on our show, Luciano performed a live acoustic set Forever. that you will be seeing in full for the first time. Tiffany Gray chronicles her rags to riches journey in a book that brings her to our stage. All coming up right here on our stage. Welcome to the show everyone. I am Winford Williams. We'll be right back. On Stage with Winford Williams. This episode of On Stage is brought to you by Perfect Love Jamaica, talent show and gospel concert. Saturday, May 18 at Friendship Primary School, Fairfield Road, Spanish Town. For tickets and info, dial 843-3720. Over the Easter weekend in Brooklyn, New York, hundreds made the 25-year-old Massive B Institution Fire Sundays their party destination. Our Jason Williams was present. Massive B family, Bobby Condors, Jabba, Fire Sundays over 25 years. Well, actually about 30 years of Massive B playing in Brooklyn, right? Church years, Mr. Bob. Over 30 years. Let's be professional. Went for big of your goddamn self. Yo, yeah. y'all already know. Massa B family, Fire Sundays. <laughs> As Massive B's big yearly assignment, the Love and Harmony Cruise makes its way to Jamaica as we speak. Every Sunday on Utica Avenue in Brooklyn, it's Fire Sundays. Where fans of the veteran sound system can get their fill and more. Started when we used to play at Brooklyn, at one place named the Ark from Flatbush. Right behind the stairs, we used to play with David Levy from WBLS, Big Respect to David Levy, Massive B, Bobby Connors, and Jabba from the year 1992. And you don't know, there are closed down to certain and certain things out of our control. So everybody used to see we had the other dances like on Friday, Saturday, before, this is before social media, when them see in the streets and cassette days where I got, yo, when did they know on a Sunday night? When did they know on a Sunday night? So then now we say, yo, you know what? Let we do one thing on a Sunday night now. And two, we have a crowd who have a high, high grade followings. You understand me, idea? So anyway, see the ganja, it's a massive sound. So we say, yo, how we bring the fire? Like the fireman came to so that's why we get the name Fire Sunday. And that's why it's called Fire Sunday. Until this day, generations after generations, decades after decades. Give now the weed glory. legal. Now the weed is legal. Yeah. And the weed just a bun. So you don't know you want to have fun. All a vibe is not where you put on the pretty clothes and hear some good music and hear some tune and artists pass through. Everybody free to midnight. Everybody free to midnight. It's not a high cast thing. It's a thing for vibes. I listen to the Massive B sound every Sunday. A feature of the Fire Sundays concept is supporting artists both based in Jamaica and in New York. On Easter weekend, it was all about Money Mark. Brooklyn artists, we try to support the local artists. Abby Dallas was just in here. You understand, a couple weeks ago, Skang and Rajwild passed through and this song out. And then we had TJ album release party. So, you know what I mean? From If you, if you haven't been coming to Fire Sundays, Anthony B, Sean Paul, Bean Junior Reed used to be here all the time. You know, 
what I'm saying? Enough show, Spraga Benz, Elephant Man, everybody. So we try to still support the local artists, the New York artists, and Money Mark is a Brooklyn artist. There's a song called Get in the Groove, and you already know tonight's a single release party. We've been playing it on Hot 97. It's a bad song, so you already know, love is love, we in the streets. Money move. At the top. Fire Sunday, everything all right. Flat today, doing pressure there. We're at Flat today, money mark there. We're money move there. We're doing it. Yeah. Just always do that. Work never stop. We have to keep working, you know what I mean? When I think like it's it, it's never it. The work have to just stop, because I remember meeting with Winford, yeah, I'm ready. And Winford was like, be a couple more years. And see it, all right, now I represent, you know what I mean? So the work never have to stop, and your dream will come true. I remember from the people them say determined, you'll get a piece. Right? And aside from this event tonight, what else? Are Jamaica, big up Kingston, big up Portmore, you know, so big up. We originate from them places. Carnal Avenue, Augusta Drive, you know the thing. Drink well, Bob Juice Company, you know the thing. Our history not the making all right now. A music are the thing. All right. And here now is a taste of Money Mark's new single, Get in the Groove. Money Mark, hot, hot. Press all of the ladies. Money can take. Use a blasting hands, them gon' clap, and now you can move your feet. DJ swinging voices, them singing, you can come watch and see. Party people stuck in the middle, it's taking over soon. How a pleasure, feel it whenever this sound comes back to you. So I'm on the move, I'm on the move, getting on the groove, getting on the groove, getting on the groove. Living the feel like loca, baby you want like so I'm on the move, I'm on the move, getting on the groove, getting on the groove, getting on the groove. Double top and back it up, baby. You know that you're my lady. Foot play and move to the dance floor. You know we're raving all night for sure. No drinking and driving the world side. Yeah, outside. just baby, tell me when you're ready to slide. slide. Yeah, let's go someplace where we could get high. Yeah. And hands them gon' clap and now you can move your feet DJ swinging voices, them singing, you can come watch and see Party people stuck in the middle, it's taking over soon How a pleasure, feel it whenever this song comes back to you Living the feel like loca, baby you want like soca I'm on the move, I'm on the move, getting on the groove, getting on the groove Living the feel like loca, baby you want like soca I'm on the move Money stuck straight to the ceiling What a wonderful feeling Pray to Father God for the healing No weapon shall form against me shall not prosper Living the V like loca Maybe I'm your soldier I'm on the move Use a blasting hands, them gon' clap and now you can move your feet DJ swinging voices, them singing, you can come watch and see Party people stuck in the middle, it's taking over soon How a pleasure, feel it whenever this song comes back to you Living the feel like loca, baby you want like soca I'm on the move, getting on the groove Still to come, Sharon Marley tells us about the impact of the One Love movie on the Marley Estate. While Devo, who plays his father in the One Love movie, brings his latest music project. Last week, during his appearance on our show, Luciana performed a live acoustic set that you will be seeing in full for the first time. Born in America, raised in Port Royal, Jamaica, Tiffany Gray chronicles her rags to riches story in a new book. All coming up. We'll be back. This episode of On Stage is brought to you by Perfect Love Jamaica, talent show and gospel concert. Saturday, May 18 at Friendship Primary School, Fairfield Road, Spanish Town. For tickets and info, dial 843-3720. Oh. 
On Stage with Winfred Williams. Born in America and raised in Port Royal, Jamaica, Tiffany Gray is a dynamic entrepreneur, real estate mogul, and philanthropist. A rags to riches journey that is now published in a book that brings Tiffany to our stage. Tiffany, welcome. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's my <laughs> pleasure. Congratulations. Thank you. A, a, a rags to riches story that is right there now in that book. Yes. All of it for us to read and to be inspired by. Yes, yes. Oh, oh wow. But before we get into it, just tell us a little bit about that journey from Port Royal to corporate America. Young girl from Port Royal, we mm -hmm. went to New York first, then we moved to California. Yes. Um, it was rough, you know. My mom is a foreigner, she's from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, back then, we didn't have it easy. I didn't have it easy at all. I started to sell candy in high school to help my mother out. Yeah. You know, like we had food stamps and stuff. So I used to get suckers and sell them in high school so we could pay bills and stuff like that. And then at 18, I started selling Kirby vacuum cleaners. And then um, one particular day, I mm -hmm. sold a Kirby vacuum cleaner in a you know, big old white house in Anaheim, California. And I was like, hmm. Something ain't right here, you know? Yes. I need to be on the other side of this. I need to be selling the houses. And so that's when I went to the bookstore, um, the library, mm -hmm. and I got this book called Rags to Real Estate Riches. And mm -hmm. that's the book that helped me on my journey. At first, I'm like, okay, this seems good, but how someone like me from <laughs> Port Royal, how can I do this? I don't know nothing about credit or all of that stuff, you know? Yes. But um, what I did was I just kept researching. I kept reading books until I figured it out. And I got in real estate at the age 19. Oh, yes. really? So you were like self-made? Yes, pretty much. At what, yes. at what age did you leave the U.S. to come to Jamaica? Soon I was born, like, like uh, two months, You were months a baby old. when you came baby. to yes. Jamaica? Yes. So you really are a Jamaica? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, so the rags. Uh-huh. What was the life in, life in Jamaica? Was well, no, it? not really, because even though we didn't have much in Jamaica, Jamaica's rich, right? right. The soil, the people is rich. Okay. We had the water, we could go fishing, you know, we mm. could pick up mango off the tree. So, no, I wouldn't say the racks came from Jamaica. The racks actually came from America, because when you get to America from a different country, they don't treat you good. Okay. I'm sorry to say, right? And then you have to find a way. Like, I know when I look back at my mom profile, right, um, she was making a dollar. How can you feed a family off a dollar an hour back mm -hmm. then? You know, so the racks came from being in America. We got evicted being in America. My mom never got evicted in Jamaica. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the real estate was where you, the riches came. <laughs> so, so, okay, yes. so bridge to speak to that transition now from what you were doing before uh -huh. to real estate. So when I got in real estate at the age of 19, I started doing loans. Mm -hmm. So that's why I could take any client from A to Z, right? Mm -hmm. A one-stop center. So I started doing a mortgage loan. And then after mortgage loan, a couple of years into it, I said, you know, I'm tired of being in the office, right? Yeah. <laughs> I want to be out in the field. So I got into real estate, got, went back to school, got my real estate license, and started selling real estate in California. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then venture off, you know, got married, got divorced, venture off into Georgia, the Georgia market. Now TAMG Realty is licensed in eight states and in Jamaica. Yes. In Jamaica too. Yes, we're in Jamaica too. So I'm going to be helping all the people to buy homes, first-time home buyers, investors, developers. Yes, we're in Jamaica. Too. Oh, yes. really? Yes. So, how do you find our market com in comparison to that of the U.S.? The those in the U.S. It's very competitive. The price and everything is very competitive. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the the process take a little bit longer to close on a deal, mm -hmm. but it's the same, pretty much, same criteria. Yes. And are Jamaicans living in the U.S. Uh -huh. looking to buy property in Jamaica as much as we would like them to do? Yes. They are. Yes. Jamaicans absolutely. want to own. Jamaicans in the U.S. want to own properties in Jamaica. The Jamaicans I know, yes. Okay. Yes, but m maybe more of them don't know that they can. Oh, so yeah. I could be uh, that voice to get more people because a lot of Americans is buying 
properties in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. I mean, tourists is a great business, right? right? Tourism. So a lot of Americans, so why not the Jamaicans do it too? Absolutely. This is your country. <laughs> that is what I'm talking about. I think Jamaicans should beat them to the punch. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, because yes. they're, they're doing Airbnb, they're buying properties and setting up Air, Airbnb yes. in Jamaica. Yes, making all the wealth. Ah, <laughs> and so Jamaicans should know this and should take note because it's your country, this beautiful, this, this paradise. Right. <laughs> It's still a paradise. Yes, it's <laughs> okay. like Eden, you know. <laughs> and so you better be you better be sure to have your little piece of it. Yeah. Because it's going. It's going and it's going quickly. Yeah, the real yes. estate is a booming thing in Jamaica. Right. Now. The construction industry is very active. It's very active. Building high rises. Yes. Yes. And you can build equity quickly as well. Of course. You know? Yes. And you're helping your book and your book is available online. And yes, it Amazon is. Amazon and all over, I suspect. Well, not Amazon yet. It should be in Amazon the first week of May, mm -hmm. but it's on our website. I also have a school called, called Tiny Footprints Academy. Yes. So you could um, get my book off of all my social handler, social media and handler, mm -hmm. and tinyfootprintsacademy.com. Okay. Yes, yes. So, so they should go get it. They and, should go get it, absolutely. And, and so much more to learn. Yes. From not just your rags to riches journey, but also real estate and how to own and, and, and buy properties and so on. Absolutely. Suspect. And how to be a, an entrepreneur, how to run a business on a corporate level. Okay. There's so much to learn. And the books talk about reverse and turmoil because what we don't know is it's okay to fail, right? Yeah. That's the only way you're going to learn and climb the ladder. You know, as Jamaicans, we're afraid to fail. We're taught that failure is a no-go. You can't show emotions, in, yeah. but you have to fail to really make it. Mm -hmm. And then it's different levels to it, because each time you climb the ladder, you're going to have another obstacle, another turmoil that you're going to have to overcome. Mm -hmm. And you can't overcome it the same way you did the last one, yes. right? Okay. So, yes. yes. Wow. Yes. So much we can learn from you then. Absolutely. And then the book is? Reverse and turmoil. Reverse. Reversing turmoil. Yes. Ah, that's it. And yes. look at you. This beautiful you on it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming and sharing with us. Thank you for having me. We wish you well. Thank you. And I know my following will be going out to look at you, to look up your book. Yes. And, and look you up on social and so on to know more about you because there's, your, your story is loaded with inspiration. Thank you. Thank for you. For others. Yes. Thank you so much. All right, so there you have her in the segment of our show, Tiffany. And uh, still to come, Sharon Marley, Devo, and Luciano. We'll go back. This episode of On Stage is brought to you by Perfect Love Jamaica, talent show and gospel concert. Saturday, May 18 at Friendship Primary School, Fairfield Road, Spanish Town. For tickets and info, dial 843-3720. On stage with Winford Williams. What Sharon Marley tells us during a recent interview about the impact of the Bob Marley One Love movie on the Marley estate that we are only now sharing with you. Don't you have to sin? So speak a little bit about the movie, its impact on the Marley estate and the ah. So. You know, I hear that it's top grossing in, in the States. Mm -hmm. um, I hear that it's making millions. I haven't seen any of it. Yeah. So I can't tell you the detail about its impact on the estate, yeah. but its impact on me personally mm -hmm. has been um, immense because it took me back to that time. Yes. You know, it, it, oh, the yes. trauma of that time was fresh again wow. and I cried for the whole movie so did mom she was sitting right there and um that's where it took me you mm -hmm. know and it made me angry again because as I was saying to somebody today we never realized what was happening when the police came to our house and took us to Strawberry Hill we were just having fun as kids in a police car with the mm -hmm flashing lights and everything was so apparent. 
we, you know, bloody up on our mother in the, the dust on our head, tie up and all of this. You know, something happened, but the intensity of what it really was didn't strike until we were older, 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 mm -hmm. much older that, hold on a second. Mm -hmm. Our own people tried to kill our parents, you know, so seeing the movie again, I get upset again, you know, because it's something that really, really, really happened to our family. Somebody tried to kill our own people. Yeah. It's not like strangers came in from outer space. It was our own people tried to kill our parents, you know, and our lives were never the same after that. Mm. We, we lived a very sheltered life after that. You know, no friends, we couldn't go out. And so it made us kind of antisocial. When we really became social again was when we started to perform on stage, you know, and we saw our fans out there. But even to socialize with our fans, we're afraid because we, we don't know who to trust, yeah. who is trying to harm us, you know. So it, it really affected our lives in a big way. Mm -hmm. So people have different things to say about the movie, not realizing that yes. this is our lives. We almost lost our parents. Yes. Talk about that some more. You know, yeah, it brought tears to my eyes to, you know, think about really again, you know. I know when my mother first saw Kingsley that night on the screen, she started wailing because he embodied Bob so much. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I could see her going back and at one point I was like, I think we need to take mommy out of the theater because it was too much for her. But she didn't say, mommy, you want to leave? She said, no, she didn't. She, her resilient self, no, <laughs> you know, yes. she don't want to leave. And we pushed through the movie, you know, we pushed through it, but yeah, and I had to say kudos to Ziggy because, like I said to him, you didn't cry or anything while you were filming for this whole year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not all, I'm water run down my face, but you know what it takes to do that? Yeah. You know, it's real, it's not a fi fiction. You know, he went all over the world promoting the movie and every time have to see it and relive it every time. Yeah, man, I had to tell him, look, kudos, you know? And I was there with him in the, at the Toronto premiere, and I had to hold him hand and say, look, whenever you need any of us to come out here and be with you, all you have to do is say so, you know? But he's like his father, he's just, oh, man, a cool man, okay. <laughs> is it, some feel that it's a shot in the arm for reggae. Um, do you think so? I do think so. Mm -hmm. I really do think so because it's bringing so many different eyes, different age group. Yes. Um, it's going world over, mm -hmm. you know, Hong Kong. Not that they didn't love Bob already, but they're reminded of how much they, they did love him and do still love him and want more of him still. Yes. You can't get enough of him. So it did, it did boost reggae, I think. And one of the main reasons I think we wanted to do this film too was to even teach our own children about our history, mm -hmm. you know, because they too came at the after, you know. So we found it an interesting tool to show them what happened before, yes. Yes. you know. And I'm sure we're gonna probably do another segment that go even further back, the before, the before, you know, deeper into the trench town years. But it was important that they knew what happened those two years, you know? Wow. Well, my dear, it's all good news from everywhere that we have gotten in terms of feedback about its impact yes. on the music, on Jamaica, yes. on the the Marley brand, globally. Of course. Yeah. Mago tired. Oh, yeah. The Mago tired. I said it, you know, he's a prophet. Indeed. He said it. Yeah. I, I tell you, they, I saw the premiere in Kingston and it was, yeah. Did you cry? 
it moves, it, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it tears us up. I mean, yeah. when we look at it and, yeah. and, and remember um, that time in our lives when we lost this great man, almost, when we, well, we, we felt that it was, it was almost as if there's this force out there who, who just want to take us out if we, if we aspire for greatness, if, we, if, we're, if we're special. As youngsters, then, you, you feel like, you know, are we safe? You, you feel a sense of insecurity when a giant like Bob went and how, and then you hear all these stories about how and why and so on. So a lot to process at the time and it was, yes. it was hard. It, it was, was hard, hard. All of us. It was hard. I mean, it's good to hear it coming from yeah. someone like yourself. Yeah to know that you did feel that too. Oh yes. You know, it's, it's good to hear because some people don't see Bob as, as a human being, you know, they see him as a, a picture, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, a, 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 a stone man, <laughs> you know, without any, any inners, you know, any, any feelings and emotions. He can be sad, he can be happy, he can be goofy, all of, all of it. So it's mm -hmm. good to see that other persons in even in the industry can feel that oh my god this guy is a kid he was basically a kid because all my children now are older than than bob was when he passed away he was basically a child and and so was mom mm -hmm. and then she had to raise five children on her own yeah and when we match the catalog with that picture that movie mm -hmm. wow you know, just, 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 just to play the music again, a whole, a whole awesome. other level of meaning, right? An interpretation of who he was, what he did, and so on. It's everything is is grown. On Glad us. to hear that. Explode on us because now the the relevance and significance of his work is clearer to so us. So much more important. Yeah, you because know, you know we take it for granted as an artist doing music, but then. Everything in the catalog, every song. Every song. Means something to us. <laughs> yes. Now. We can connect it with a I'm truth happy to hear that. about us as a people and our struggle. You know what I mean? Struggle is real, you know. And they did Bob wrong. You know, I don't know if anybody apologized for that. And that's what made me upset mm. that night of the movie. Like, wow, nobody still didn't say anything to us as a family. You know, it's still just monetary and who have this to say and who have that to say and not realizing how deeply it affected us those two years. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. we need to treat each other better. Mm -hmm. Don't matter if it's a like a ghetto boy, a red skin, smoking weed. We have to treat everyone equally because you never know who that little boy going to yeah. turn out to be, or a little girl for that matter, you know? Equality is important. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh yes. And those lessons we should take from it. It's a history book, those, those one and a half hours, Jamaican history, oh, yes. and even more so, my family's history. You know, so I know years, hundreds of years when we're all gone, and this history comes up, it's important for us to make notes that we treat it properly and don't be flippant about it because it's grounded in Jamaican earth. Yeah. Just like the slaves that came from Africa. Yeah, don't get me started about it. <laughs> Sorry, you it's, know, it's deep. It is. It's deep, it's deep. All right, and still to come right here on our stage, Devo and the messenger, Luciano. This episode of On Stage is brought to you by Perfect Love Jamaica, talent show and gospel concert. Saturday, May 18 at Friendship Primary School, Fairfield Road, Spanish Town. For tickets and info, dial 843-3720.
On Stage with Winford Williams. This is where singer, rapper, instrumentalist, and actor, Devo, who plays his father, Junior Marvin, in the Bob Marley One Love movie. As soul and rock and roll, Junior Marvin's in control. is in control. Shares his latest music projects right here on our stage. <laughs> Yes, sir, yes, David. Sir. Blessed love. Good to have you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so start with the movie. Your, your role in the movie and how it impacts that side of your work. Um, well, because, you know, <clears throat> it's a musical movie, you know, Legacy. Bob Marley is the biggest artist ever. I mean, my father being a part of that has impacted my life from the beginning, you know. Um, okay. My first memories is just being in the studio playing the Naya Bingy drum, so... I'm instrumentalist, artist, mm -hmm. singer, rapper, you know, all in one, actor, you know. <laughs> so, you know? so you were groomed by your dad? Basically, you know, like the influence of just being a part of a legacy. It's like when I was young, mm -hmm. it never really catch me. It's like I was, I was so used to it yes, that okay. it never felt, it always felt normal. Mm -hmm. But going into high school, everyone would tell me, oh, my, wow, your father, do you realize how big your father is? Mm -hmm. with the Whalers, like how big he's like the second star when Bob come off of the stage or give some time for shine, him just come out and take over the stage. So it's like he was so electrifying as a guitarist, his impact was so big. Like everyone always told me, oh, you look like your father. So I felt always like I had something to do with reliving his legacy or filling his shoes as okay. carrying on, you know, what the Whalers, Bob always wanted the Whalers to, to keep on keep okay. it on, you know? So the auditioning process, did you, did you audition or did they say you can play? Well, I mean, they, I didn't even know they were actually doing the film. I mean, I always thought, you know, they should do a Bob Marley movie. Mm -hmm. And um, my sister, who seen um, the casting call was um, through KBC Casting. They had put out a large um, display on Instagram. They had an uh, Instagram post about it. Yeah. And they had every character almost. And uh, I seen my dad, I came across my dad's post, and my sister sent it to me, and I was like, there's no way this is real. Mm -hmm. I sent it to my father. He, he didn't even actually know at the time, you know, because mm -hmm. it was before, like, pre-production started and stuff. And, um, yes, yeah, so I, I figured, you know, this can't be real. I was so focused on my music at the time with mixing and mastering my first album still, which is a debut to come out very soon. Um, I wasn't, like, thinking it was a real thing. So one day I thought, you know what, maybe if this is a real thing, I would, I would be... Very pissed off if <laughs> I never got a chance to even audition for my father's role, you know? So okay. I said, I look back at the post and I see Paramount at the top. I said, no way. I have to reach out to them, you know? So I DM'd the page and Karine actually re responded to me. And I was like, yeah, man, I hope you guys never pick no one for playing my father. Car. Who would be better than me, you know? <laughs> his yeah. actual, his twin. So you know what I'm saying? I, she was like, you do play the part well. I mean, you look exactly like him. We just need to see if you can act. Yes. So they sent me an audition tape. I sent back in. They never asked me to bring out the guitar in the audition, but it was a part where Bob was asking, oh, play it like this and stuff, but it was just more dialogue. It was just like a dialogue supposed to be. Right. But I brought the guitar anyway, and I played something. So when Kareen seen it now, she said, you can't wait, you can't play the guitar for mm -hmm. real? This is um, urgent. The director wants to see two more videos. So I sent in two more videos. I think it was Redemption Song, Waiting in Vain, Solo. And they were like, wow. We, mm. we need you, like, <laughs> this is wow. great. They were like, oh, can you work from here to here? And I was like, yeah, man, of course. <laughs> what do you mean? Nice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and the response so far, the impact on you? Oh, on my your life. father and his... It's all brilliant, you know, man. It's just another refresh for the, for the youth and for everybody to get back into Bob Marley. Because, you know, this youth, they don't really know what Bob really come from. They don't know the, the ins and outs and his actual life story. So... For them to sit down and watch it now, they get a little more intellect on what's going on and what mm -hmm. the, the message is really all about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not all about smoking weed and, and looking cool with dreadlocks and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's about, you know, your message and your word through the music. It's right, powerful. Yes. We'll live on forever. And human rights. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? So where does this leave you now with this movie under your belt, this big movie? Is I feel it? like a newborn yes. champion, you know, so I have yes. to keep on wearing the championship belt and um, do only doing champion sound mm -hmm. music. So now, you know, I'm ready to I release my music and my album where I've been working very hard my whole life on. So it's like I have a whole heap of music ready for put out. And um, also, 
acting, I feel like I can't do nothing unless it's, it, you know, it's on a certain level. So yes. it's only big projects I'm looking forward to now. Um, you know, working, trying to get with a few agencies that can see the same vision as I. Because mm -hmm. I, I always looked up to men like um, Ice Cube, who did NWA and had his son play him, you know, in an NWA movie and had Friday the Trilog Trilogies and Barbershop, where he directed and acted in the films as well. So I've always been like that with my music, where I've directed videos for Tory Lanez, edited. Mm -hmm. um, I've done my own, directed my own music videos, and they all have some somewhat of acting in there. So I've always been preparing myself for a job like this, you know? All right, let's pause and take a little piece of your music right here. That's a taste of the music of Davo right here on our stage. And that one is on the run. <laughs> yes, sir. That's the title. So, yeah, to speak to this record for us. So, on the run, you know, it means, you know, the lifestyle of an entertainer and a, and, a, and a rock star, a movie star, either. Mm -hmm. I feel like anyone, when you're very busy, you're on the go, you're on the run, you know? It could be a, okay. a boss and you just move from here to here. But it's like, if you have a relationship with someone, that's your, like, your wife or your girlfriend or whatever, you're going to be like, look, baby, you're going to have to be on the run with me. We could be like Wanya and Clyde. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> can take over this together, or okay. it's either you get left. Mm -hmm. but, but that's the life, so, you know? I'm, I'm on the run for, for you guys, for my fans, you know what I'm saying, to bring you more, more and more, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I got to go. I got to touch here. I have to touch there. I have to go Africa. I have to go Japan, wherever I must go. And it's getting love, this record. Yeah, man. It's amazing. It's, it's R&B, hip-hop, you know? It's a vibes. I, I give them some, you know, sauce on it. With my singing style, I feel like it's just coming up as a, a, a Jamaican. I always have different pockets. I feel like I hit as a hip-hop artist that most mm -hmm. don't, you know? So that's mm -hmm. the good part about my music, production-wise, all of that. Uh, yeah. So, so who are you in hip-hop? How do they see you? As a Jamaican, doing hip-hop? Yeah, I feel or? like I'm just like an international Jamaican, you know, rock yeah. star. Like, my music speaks, like, you know, um, very, very vibey, wavy. You know, they call me Davo, Wavo. It's like that wave Dave, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? We come from the island where everything wavy, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So that's in the music. It's just a vibe. You know, you catch, you catch the wave, take it on a trip, you know what I'm saying? It can get a little psychedelic. But that's, that's what it's all about, you know, just feeling like you're going to another realm. At, at what age did you leave Jamaica? I left here when I was 11. So, you know, I, as a 10-year-old as a in Jamaica, I felt like I was a grown man. Because, you know, Jamaica <laughs> 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 raised you up fast. You know what I'm saying? So I yes. had the same mindset since I was 10 years old. Not and, and how difficult was it to fit into the, 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 the American system of schooling and so on? Well, I mean... You know, I born, I born on Hope Road, and you know, I did go Pete St. Paul, and then I did go, I did go Hillel for a little bit. So going to America from Hillel was like, you know, it was easy for me. I, I think I studied a lot of, because I was always into like TV shows and stuff. I studied a lot of American dialect, you know, with my brothers. We always wanted to be into entertainment. So like we would okay. take our dad's, my mom's camera and, and make short films mm -hmm. and like act like Americans and stuff. So going to America, we always loved hip hop. We loved Tupac. Me and my brother's Biggie. My, my dad asked me as a child, what kind of music do you want to do? Mm -hmm. What kind of artist do you want to be? And he said, let's go to the record store. You choose. And I said, I want to be a rapper. I want to be like Tupac. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I went there and I picked Snoop Dogg's first album. It was the first album I ever bought. I seen the cartoon cover. 
Like I said, this looks cool. I picked that, and my brother picked Will Smith, and because we loved um, um, the show that he had, yeah. Bel Air, um, you know, Fresh Prince. So, yeah, man, that that was the, the the start of it, and we just kept on as, you know, I went to high school in New York, and that's where I really started rapping, because you know, New York, they were my freestyle back all day, and um, you know, I used all of that and mixed into one. You know? Okay, and the acting and those, where, where is that? Um, my dad was into film and my aunt, um, Akua, her, his sister, back when they were kids. And um, my dad always had a camera. Like, yes. he's actually even coming out with a book. So when he was with Bob Marley, he always had a photographer camera. So he took hundreds of pictures that had never been seen before. So mm -hmm. I always had a camera growing up, being like my dad, always was into photography and film. Okay, so you were, you were, you yeah. were exposed before? Yeah, you, yeah, maybe. very early on. And so, I took yeah. drama classes and stuff like that as a child in school. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, Reggie, <coughs> we can only wish you well. Thank you, brother. And thank you for coming stage. and sharing. Thank you guys for having me, man. Right. Make sure y'all go tune in to On The Run. It's out now on all DSPs, all digital platforms. You can buy it, you can stream it, wherever. Uh, Devo, man. Thanks for having me. Yes, there. Devo. That's Keep flying the flag here, sir. One love. That's One love. Stage. Every yes, time, Reggie. Yes, Bless. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. All right, so that's him in this segment of our show. Devo, and it's still to come, a live performance from Devo. And later, The Messenger, an acoustic performance that may surprise you, right here on our show. This episode of On Stage is brought to you by Perfect Love Jamaica, talent show and gospel concert. Saturday, May 18 at Friendship Primary School, Fairfield Road, Spanish Town. For tickets and info, dial 843-3720. On stage with Winford Williams. Here is now a live performance from Devo of his latest single, On The Run. He will be followed by a special acoustic performance that the messenger Luciana did for us last week that you will be seeing in full this week. Hit. On stage, Jamaica. Wagwan, you see? Yeah. On the run, I'm by my daughter getting mine. See me outside on the come up. I'm by my daughter getting mine. Pop it for me, she on the run. She drop it for me, she on the come up. On the run. Yeah. Hold up, wait. And you know this. I've been out here on my money making motive. She wanna sweet like chocolate and some roses. Give up about it, my heart is frozen. All this money in my bank just got me lonely. All these girls just wanna baller like I'm Kobe. Been in my bag, now these just swear they love me. Doing the dash, smoking OG, sipping Cody. Oh, I've been fighting demons off I can't treat you like before I'm just trying to no making love I ain't got no time for kissing hugs On the run I'm by my dollar getting mine See me outside on the come up I'm by my dollar getting no she drop it for me, she on the come up, on the run, get mine, yeah. On stage, Jamaica, we love you. One love, one umbrella forever, you see me? Yeah. That is it. And now, the messenger, Luciano. I want to be 
as towel in your grave. So give the messenger the power, oh, just to shake wicked Babylon down. I want to be a star in your crown. So give the cabal and the power, oh, just to shake wicked Babylon down. Who no see me come on, y'all? To do your holy work. I just said, me come on, yeah. To manifest on earth. I say, mankind ain't easy. But because I know it's necessary. Messenger, the power who tried to shake wicked Babylon down. I want to be a star in your crown. So give the command and the power who tried to shake the tip of your I spend sleepless nights. Yeah. 
the messenger, Luciano. I bet he didn't know he could play so well. And that's our show for this week. Winford Williams, on behalf of all of us, thanking you for joining us. Do join us again next week for more On Stage. Man was made for soldier oh, oh. and together we live forever upon this road on which I draw to teach the word of God. My Bible is my only shield And the music is my rod I pray mankind would hear my voice And listen when I call But all they do is carry on Like they do Thanks for watching our video Please click subscribe and be on our stage anywhere, anytime, always.